Hi, I'm John, Business Development Director at Technicolor Games. I'm excited to be here talking at the uh, Beyond Gaming track. This presentation, I'll be talking about blockchain, NFTs and gaming. So for good or bad, it's hard to miss that everyone is talking about NFTs, cryptocurrency and blockchain. And whilst the technology behind it isn't difficult to understand, it is worth understanding what it is, what it aspires to be, and what are the challenges it faces. Before delving into the digital realm, a quick story from the physical art world about a lost Da Vinci painting, Salvador Mundi. The relevance of the story will become apparent. The painting was sold in Sotheby's in London in 1958 for £45 as an overpainted copy of the original masterwork. It then resurfaced again in 2005 and was bought at auction by a new collector. This new owner, on a hunch, started the restoration process of the painting and using infrared photographs the restorers had taken, they discovered a trace of an earlier composition. This showed a straight thumb rather than curved. The discovery that Christ had two thumbs on his right hand was crucial. This showed that the original artist had reconsidered the positioning of the figure. Such a second thought is considered evidence of an original rather than a copy. After six years of examination, the consensus from the experts resulted in validation from the National Gallery in London, and it was exhibited as the original lost Leonardo da Vinci. At this point, the value skyrocketed, and it was subsequently sold at auction in 2017 for £382 million. Pounds. The key takeaway from this story is that whilst art has no intrinsic value, the value comes from who painted it, who owned it, who wants to own it, and the provenance of the painting. The idea of consensus, validation and provenance is relevant when discussing blockchain. So what is a blockchain? Blockchain technology is essentially a database or ledger. Whilst a standard database is owned and operated by a central individual or company, a blockchain ledger is decentralized and exists online, hosted and maintained by thousands of computers forming a network. Imagine this as a cooperative online document that everyone can read and write to whose entries once written cannot be edited or altered. This decentralization is what provides the blockchain with some of its security. If a bad actor attempts to corrupt the data by manipulating the figures within the ledger, their sole version of the ledger would fail the consensus of the 99 other members or the 99% of the network and would be rejected as invalid. The only theoretical way to change the blockchain to your advantage is by a 51% attack effectively a hostile takeover of the network by owning over 51% of the network power. This network power and the consensus it provides comes from the proof of work cryptographic algorithm that is the heart of the blockchain. This is an increasingly difficult math problem that all the computers on the network compete to be the first one to solve. The computer that solves the problem first earns the right to mine a new block on the blockchain and is also rewarded with a bounty of the cryptocurrency associated with that blockchain, which is the reason why these computers are called miners. As the blockchain scales, the difficulty and the complexity of the problem also scales, and more and more computing power and energy is needed to mine new blocks. This is where the main criticism of blockchain technology and by extension cryptocurrencies and NFTs occurs, and is arguably the number one reason why the technology is receiving mass disapproval and negative headlines. More on this in a bit though. So the permanent ledger is made up of all the entries and transactions that have ever occurred as a public record. And these entries are grouped together into blocks and blocks are grouped together into a single chain, the blockchain. So what's the point? Well, every entry on the ledger has a unique address, a hash, and every entry can be used to store data. That data could be a digital cryptocurrency coin, such as Bitcoin or a token like an NFT. Blockchain technology was popularized by the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. So what is Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies? During the financial crisis of 2008, an entity known only as Satoshi Nakamoto published a white paper in which was detailed the concept of the blockchain, in which he was adapting previously proposed technology from 1982 and 1999. And a year later, he used this technology to launch Bitcoin, a digital cryptocurrency. Bitcoin was envisioned to remove the central control and the perceived corruption of the institutions of the banking system and allow the individual to be their own bank, to be solely responsible for your own Bitcoin, to be able to send it anywhere in the world within seconds with no spending limits, almost no fees, 
without having to worry about exchange rates or interest rates, without anything other than an internet connection. Whilst Bitcoin, again, has no intrinsic value, it is measured against its exchange rates to fiat currencies, most popularly the US dollar. After Bitcoin, many other cryptocurrencies started their own blockchains, like Ethereum, Litecoin, and Dogecoin, which incidentally first started as a joke poking fun at Bitcoin itself. Remember, Bitcoin and blockchain aren't the same thing. Bitcoin is just a cryptocurrency using blockchain technology. Bitcoin's blockchain is completely separate to, say, the Ethereum blockchain or the Litecoin Litecoin blockchain. However, the Ethereum blockchain not only supports its own cryptocurrency, Ethereum, it also allows for the tokenization of entries on its blockchain. These tokens can be used for applications, smart contracts, or to mint NFTs. So what is an NFT? NFT stands for non-fungible token which essentially means a commodity with unique traits. As an example, have you ever been to a pottery painting workshop? The blank plates on the shelves that you can choose from, those would be fungible. Mass-produced plates that are all effectively identical. However, once you take that plate, paint your design on it, have it glazed and then fired, your plate now becomes non-fungible, a unique asset with its own characteristics and traits. Whilst the art world wasn't the first group to start using NFTs, it's not surprising that the art industry has seen some of the most popular usage. Collectors of traditional physical prints are used to the mechanisms of limited editions, variant editions and open editions of prints, being bought and sold as collections and speculative assets. The authenticity of these prints in the, is generally the edition number or a certificate of authenticity. Certificates of authenticity also carry over into other common forms of collectible, such as signatures, stamps, coins, action figures, comics, and even nowadays, rare retro video games. Interestingly, legend has it that Pablo Picasso used to pay for even small amounts by personal check only. Before handing the check over, he would sometimes be known to flip it over and do a little sketch on the back of the check. In 1991, a check from Picasso with a cover value of only $100 with a sketch of a little devil on the back was sold at Christie's for $6,500. Did Pablo Picasso invent the tokenized asset, the NFT? Whilst the first NFTs were minted on the Ethereum blockchain in 2015, it wasn't until 2017 when the first game project called CryptoKitties used NFTs. CryptoKitties would allow you to collect and breed digital cats. The same year, CryptoPunks were also minted. This collection of 10,000 8-bit pixel art profile pictures with uniquely generated traits are still extremely popular. Today, the minimum price to own a CryptoPunk is approximately $200,000. One with rare traits sold recently for a staggering $10.2 million. 2018 saw NFT projects such as Decentraland and the first play-to-earn games like Axie Infinity starting. 2021, we saw NFTs from the music world, social media companies, gaming companies, brands and sports institutions to name but a few. Arguably the most infamous NFT project is the Board 8 Yacht Club. This is a collection of 10,000 unique pictures of apes. These were programmatically generated with seven different traits possible that vary in their rarity. This has quickly become an exclusive elite members club with a minimum price to own one of these apes at $200,000, members including celebrities and brands themselves. These apes do also feature utilities associated with the ownership of these apes, which is encoded into the smart contracts that are on the token on the blockchain. Board 8 Yacht Club ignited the current frenzy that we are seeing, and now every day new brands, companies, musicians, and utilities are minting their own NFTs. It's popular criticism on social media that NFTs are overpriced, planet destroying receipts to an ugly JPEG picture. And recent surveys of not only game developers, but communities at large have highlighted that gamers and game developers are extremely opposed to the tokenization of gaming through blockchain and NFTs. The online war of words between these, those opposed and those in favor of NFTs has also highlighted that many of those pro NFT don't fully understand what ownership of digital assets versus ownership of the rights and how these are applicable to the NFTs themselves. The games industry and gamers are used to collect all items, consumables and cosmetic items that have been attached to a game, a profile or an account. Some of these in-game items are also cross-game and cross-game cross-platform compatible. And there are even legitimate trading markets to swap and sell these items. The games industry has also previously seen controversial game mechanics such as loot boxes, microtransactions, and one-time unlock codes to prevent second-hand game selling. It has also seen predatory grey marketplaces specifically designed for second-hand key reselling, none of which needed NFTs and blockchain technology to implement. 
There is, however, an argument that if whole games were, in fact, tokenized as NFTs, then gamers could legitimately sell their game to someone else, peer-to-peer, with a portion of that second-hand game sale going to the original publisher and developer as a royalty, removing any middleman. This royalty feature is just one of the possible technological features of an NFT. NFTs also don't have to be just a static image. Many are animated in complex 3D renders. They can also have real-world utility associated with them that could disrupt common marketplaces, like concert tickets, for example. Using NFTs as a venue ticket could remove the need for second-hand reseller marketplaces with any sales being peer-to-peer and the original promoter or band still getting a royalty from that second-hand resale. This naturally will increase the speculative nature of NFTs and could make them an elitist tool of the wealthy. The underlying fact is that your ownership of NFT is the ownership of the token entry on the blockchain, and any asset that is associated with that token could expire if the website or the server hosting is taken, it, it goes down. Cryptocurrencies and NFT have value only by their nature of their rarity and utility. Whilst Bitcoin was originally envisioned as a currency, the volatility and limited transaction speed make it and many other cryptocurrencies problematic as a currency. Cryptocurrencies sit as a hybrid somewhere between investment and gambling, but they don't benefit from the legal or regulatory protections from either of those industries. Stocks and bonds have government and legal oversight due to the way their return on investment can be attributed to the performance of a company. The decentralized nature of the blockchain means that no one entity should be able to meaningfully affect the price, despite some well-known social media and personalities' best efforts to try to do so. With thousands of tokens of blockchains being created every year, the news cycle is filled with stories of scams and illegal activity perpetuated by influencers and criminals. It's clear to see why many are wary of this technology. A recent report by Chainalysis showed that only 0.15% of all cryptocurrency transactions in 2021 were due to illicit activity, whereas you can attribute up to 5% of cash transactions to criminal activity every year. Now back to the single most criticized element of blockchain technology and by extension cryptocurrencies and NFT, the environmental impact. As the financial incentive is to be the first to solve the math problem and receive the mining reward, this creates an arms race where more and more powerful computers are needed to continually mine. We are now at the point where we have dedicated extremely powerful mining computers with top of the range graphics cards being the minimum point of entry to become a miner. This then becomes another problematic issue for gaming communities as they have seen hard to come by graphics cards becoming prohibitively expensive or just impossible to secure as blockchain miners buy up all the available stocks. With the proof of work blockchains, the only way to increase your chances is to increase the number of mining computers you own, thus increasing your hashing power. All of these miners are then working on mining the same block for you. This is extremely inefficient. Even the most inefficient mining rig still uses about 3200 watts per hour. And if you aren't successful in mining a new block, All that effort and energy that you put into that is wasted. In a survey, it was estimated that only 40% of blockchain mining uses renewable energy. So that leaves a massive environmental impact from the remaining 60% of blockchain usage. However, as crypto mining is done for profit, with calculations worked out to offset the cost of your equipment and energy use by the financial reward for successfully mining new blocks, the incentive for crypto mining is to be more green with renewable energy generally being much cheaper than non-renewable. This will see many mining companies relocate to where the infrastructure supports affordable renewable energy. Those that can't relocate go bust with the constant increasing equipment and fossil fuel energy costs. Newer and less hungry blockchains have launched and other consensus methods such as proof of stake have also been suggested as potential improvements. Despite proof of stake having its own security concerns and being more reliable to a 51% attack, as wealthy collectives can effectively get together and buy up all the stakes. There have also been side chains and extra layers added to existing blockchains intended to make them faster and more efficient. However, these still rely on writing back to their parent blockchain, and then they inherit all the inefficiencies that exist on that base layer and that base blockchain. All of these new developments still don't go far enough to address the environmental concerns. Much like the late 90s and the dot-com boom, The current blockchain and Web3 ecosystems are like the Wild West, with little legal and regulatory oversight, and blockchain technology being shoehorned in to solve a problem that doesn't exist, or replace a solution that was already working perfectly well. In the gaming space, you have a community that fears that tokenization of gaming will kill the fun. 
it will reduce gaming to play to earn and pay to win, with gamification taking over. Will the blockchain see uses in supply chain management or IT security? Will cryptocurrency become less volatile? Will NFTs fulfill a use case that hasn't yet been imagined? Or much like the dot-com boom, will corporations and large entities move in to take over? I'm sure as it evolves, the metaverse will incorporate blockchain technology. And much like the internet of the late 90s bears little resemblance to the internet today, the Web3 future will be something hard to visualize in the current planet. But in here and now, it's clear that any company looking to adopt blockchain technology, including NFTs, need to be able to validate the use of technology and more importantly, how they can offset and address the environmental impact of this technology. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival.